Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to answer a subscriber's question here. So a question I have been asked a lot and I have avoided answering because it is a controversial question. Um, so the question here is, why don't you prefer distant learning grad school? Um, I heard you say this in one of your videos, and a lot of people have asked this lately. I've even had graduate programs ask me about competition in the online quant education space here. So I'm going to address this, um, but I'm going to try to give you guys a lot of reasoning and detail behind why this is, um, what online learning is actually good for, and why people have the perspectives they have. So the first thing is when you ask those in the U.S. and quant finance as a industry here, um, you ask someone, okay, what do you think of an online degree? And the first knee-jerk reaction is, it sucks, it's terrible, uh, we would never hire them. And then you have to start asking the question, why? And I think a lot of people don't even think about that. It's just like, I just don't hire online. And that's just the mentality that goes to the industry. Um, again, part of this comes down to the fact that quantitative finance has been so competitive over the years. Um, and we have such selection from such robust schools and academic institutions. Um, I have stacks and stacks and stacks of resumes from masters and PhD students um, from the best of the best universities down to generic little tiny universities to liberal art colleges to anything under the sun. Um, as someone hiring, I can almost just pick and choose who I want because there's really that many students being generated now here in 2023. Now, this wasn't the case in the past, it was still super competitive, um, but I'm not gonna get into that. Now, reasons why online degree learning isn't that great. So that first piece being, I just have so much to choose from. It's easier to pick someone of a brick and mortar school that I've already hired from. These schools are older and more well-established. I know that's not the best reason, but that is one key reason here. Um, the second reason, probably the biggest reason is going to be quality, which is based on the fact of cheating. Now. Let me put this into perspective for you guys because I know people are going to say, but I took online learning and I didn't cheat. I know that. I know many of you don't. But here is the issue with this in a nutshell. Um, one, culturally, cheating is not viewed the same in every country. So in America, it is frowned upon, and yet it happens all the time. Um, culturally, there are other countries. I had a colleague of mine from another country I won't mention, and he said, well, students cheat not to get a better grade. It's just to ensure they get the right answer. Like, I had to scratch my head, like, that's the same thing as trying to get the right answer. It's like saying, you know, I got a B plus on the class and I got an A minus. I just wanted to ensure I got an A minus because it's slightly better than a B plus. Like, anyways, ethically wise, though, cheating is not viewed the same everywhere. So when you start to look, so this applies now to quant finance, you often have people that want to get online degrees for the purpose that they're not located in a specific country, um, which I'll put the caveat note here too star at the top. Uh, countries typically don't hire from other countries or regions. So United States typically doesn't hire outside of the US. That's just how it works. Now, Europe is a whole other case because Europe is kind of the European Union and kind of individual countries. It's a whole other thing. Um, but again, like you don't see a lot of Americans like jumping up and leaving and going to work in London or, you know, Zurich or somewhere else. It's There's typically good divides between everything. Uh, Singapore, for example, is another hot topic or hot area for a uh, jobs in quant finance. And yet we don't see people jumping typically between a lot of these big regions here. So if you're in a third world country or you're in a country that's not located near these, uh, getting the online degree, regardless of how good it seems, isn't going to be an advantage because you need work visas to get there. Now, the cheating piece though, so coming back to that, it is, again, people cheat at universities. So I went to one of the top rated universities globally. Um, Again, master's programs, in-person exams, brick and mortar, and we had students cheating with proctors. So we had in-classroom tests and there were students cheating that I know were cheating, that everybody else knew were cheating, and there was a large chunk of them cheating. So quality-wise, like these are the students I want to know that are cheating because I don't want to hire them because they're not really going to know the material. Now, from an online perspective, it happens even more frequently than it happens in classroom. And one of these issues is you scale this up so one of the advantages of online learning is you can have a lot of students. You can have thousands of students in a class and one person can teach and you can make this very scalable. Now with the scalability comes the fact that you typically have issues with cheating and a lot of these I had, um, so for example on this, uh, you could have a computer and you could just Google answers and cheat. Now people say, but Dimitri, it's all about finding the answer. And this is probably one of the cruxes of why I think uh, online learning and just the 
the modern mentality of education just sucks and is failing even in universities here. The goal of school is not to answer the question and get the right answer. Um, in the real world, it's people that ask the right questions and then are able to answer their questions. Now, if you can't ask the right question, you're kind of useless. And I think this is kind of the check the box mentality we're seeing with a lot of students. Um, for some reason, it deviates more to online learning as well, it seems from you know past experiences and things. Uh, but again, right, I want people that don't just go online and look up answers. And that's unfortunately what's happening a lot with cheating in universities and brick and mortar and those online. Um, the other big key issue with cheating here is it's really easy for a lot of other countries because I've heard students talking about how this actually occurred. It was a massive problem um, back, I think, like in the early 2000s. Uh, but essentially, students would say, okay, I want this job and I need this degree to do it, but I'm not smart enough or I'm too busy or it's beneath me or whatever. And so they would literally pay somebody else to do the education and the training for them, take the classes online, get the certificates all in their name. They would pay them a bunch of money for it and they would get the degree and then go and get the job. And then of course, employers are having issues with this and there was all kinds of other scandals with it. So again, cheating is much, much easier online. I know it still occurs in brick and mortar universities, but this is one of the big key drivers um, again, finding the answer is not always, you know, like people can argue like in the real world, you'll just Google something like quant finance. That's not how it works. It's a lot more complicated. It's asking the right questions at the right time and being able to answer those deeply um, to really build uh, quality models, which is what quants do. The other piece here is going to be communication and issues with other interactions in themselves. So for universities, one of the big advantages was that kind of separates out uh, brick and mortar from online is that from online experiences I have had, as well as talking to professors who are currently teaching in these quant finance programs who all had to go online during COVID, uh, they said there is a lot less student interaction with professors. So people are less likely to ask questions than they are in class. Uh, again, as a teacher, someone who teaches, you are going to get a much better experience as the teacher in the sense that I can teach you what I think you need to know and then students will ask really insightful, meaningful questions, which is why like on the job teaching, when I teach people on the job, um, they're asking like, you know, you said this, this, and this, but how does this work? And how does this other piece work? And they ask excellent questions. When you are in person, um, for some reason, again, more students ask more questions and then other students learn from those questions, which is an advantage. Um, the other piece too is often all have you know, I've been in universities and stayed behind in class. A few of us will stay behind to ask questions. And now we have like five or six of us really talking to the professor, getting deep insights, learning from them. We also go to office hours, which I've done in the past. And I have all these questions, which might not even be super related to the course, because again, I'm not checking the box, trying to finish the course. I actually am trying to use this in application. And so often, you know, having these interactions seems to be much better in person than online. The other piece as well is being able to do homework and work with other students during these courses is a massive advantage of, you know, on campus here. Now, I took an online course in college and yes, there were, you know, chat rooms and we had to swap assignments and do reviews and they try to make it interactive, but it is much, much different when you're in class and it's like, you're all just sitting there waiting for class to start and then conversations start going, whether it's school related or not. And often class comes up, homework questions come up and people start chatting and more is actually gained through that learning experience. So again, being in person just has more learning opportunities. You get more interaction with the professors, uh, especially when you start to scale online classes. So uh, our classes had 30 students, 30 students, one professor, pretty good odds. Like you can have time with your professor to ask questions and do office hours. If you scale that to thousands of students, like, if, even if everyone had all these questions and they wanted time with the professor and help with homework and all that, it typically just doesn't exist. You can't help a thousand people at a time, which is another just big downside of online learning. And then the last two pieces here are going to be rigor uh, and actual investment. We'll talk about that. So rigor wise, this seems to be an overall trend, but in general, online classes seem to have less rigor. They make them a little easier. Uh, the assignments typically are a little bit I don't know. They're less rigorous. Like I took an English 404 class. I couldn't take it in person because the way my schedule was structured. Again, this is many, many years ago. I know online learning has changed somewhat. But as I've talked to professors in the um, university systems, this seems to be a continual issue. Uh, the online ones, they just have to simplify because it's harder to teach through an online format. And so often they worry about a variety of things. And for some reason, these classes get less rigor. Now, to hit it, 
you know, honestly, I think rigor in general, which I complain about constantly on this channel, has gone down for everybody. It's gone down for universities. It's gone down for online. And a lot of this is coming to this, let's check the box mentality. I just need a degree so I can get a job. It doesn't matter if you learn anything. You just take the class. You just check the box. And this type of nonsense is going on in brick and mortar and online learning. Uh, but again, having rigor, having more rigorous material, often I just see there's more rigorous in person. Uh, you know, I don't think it's necessarily intentional. Sometimes that professors try to give like reasonable loads. Uh, and that kind of leads me into the topic of kind of the investment you put into the program. So brick and mortars are often far more expensive. Again, one of these is because, um, again, class sizes. So access to professors and all that. You have more professors per student, which is much costlier. Now, people would argue, Dimitri, we're sharing the information. Yada. If you're just memorizing facts, guys, online learning is amazing. If you are actually trying to learn the material and you need to actually ask questions, it's just not going to be as good. Like that's kind of the part of it. The other piece is the investment of your time and your money. So if you go to a brick and mortar school, I know they are extremely expensive. I think I paid like 70 something thousand dollars for my master's, like 77,000, something around there. Um, and then I had to move over there. So I had to pay for moving. I had to pay for, you know, my apartment and housing over there. And then you're like stuck on this campus and you have tuition and you have cost of books and all these things are adding up. Um, but this I think is a good thing in many ways. So I know it'd be great if it was cheap and free and whatever, whatever. Um, but the issue is too, is I think you need to weed out those that are super serious who really want to buckle down and get the degree. Um, and when you're on campus and you're stuck there, you are thinking about school 24 seven. Okay. That's what you need to really absorb the material, to really think about the material, to really like come up with excellent questions and to think all the like little details through, you need to be on campus thinking 24 seven about school, 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 school. That's all you need to think about, right? Like my rigor, rigor, rigor. You guys need to really focus down and buckle into what you're doing here because what you're gonna learn with a undergrad, a master's or a PhD, it's not enough for the real world. You're still gonna have to learn a ton of material on top of that. And so, you know, getting those students that are like really willing to make the sacrifice, you're not gonna get a lot of garbage students who just like think, oh, It'd be awesome to try for a quant finance master's. And, you know, if I make it, great. It was only $2,000. And if I don't make it, like, oh, well, who cares? But again, you're wasting teacher's time. You're wasting other students' time. Um, it's just not a good situation to be in because I think a lot of those students, they're like, okay, I have to make a really financial stretch. So I was one of those students. When my $77,000 in loans is getting plunked down for a degree like when I want to back out and I want to quit, I'm not going to. I have too much invested in this. And so being on campus, being involved with it, having essentially like a no return way, like you, you have to get the degree now because you got to make something work. Um, you're not going to get that with an online degree. You're not going to be locked in as much. You're not going to be as dedicated as much. And I know many people who are getting online degrees are trying to work full time, have families and do all this other material. Uh, it's just challenging. And I, I understand that. But at the same time, uh, being locked in, being 100% focused on one thing, which is your education and only that thing, uh, is going to get you a far better experience. Now, as a final point here on the hiring for all this, um, I've just had bad experiences with uh, dealing with people with online degrees. I've asked other people in the industry, like, you know, is there like someone else you would consider? Are there other online degrees that you would look at? And it's kind of the same thing, like, well, they were really nice and the students were, you know, motivated and they were excited about the topics, but they just didn't have a lot of the background to do it. Uh, they were missing these other classes. They needed this, they needed that, you know, and we struggle. So as a hiring perspective, there are universities that I won't hire from because of the same reason. So it's not just like only online degrees are bad and we hire from everybody else. Uh, as someone who hires a lot, you try to find the best programs, whether it's online or in person, and for some reason, there are only a handful of in-person places I prefer to hire from. And it's because we seem to get better quality students. So those students are really excited and motivated. Um, those students also know the material extremely well. Uh, those students take directions well. Those students don't require as much training. But again, everybody is going to require a ton of training. It's just how it is, even with a master's or PhD here. So from a hiring perspective, it is challenging. Now, where does online learning shine? Um, if you don't need it for a degree, so a degree, a master's degree or a PhD for quantitative finance is supposed to be the base foundation, the thing you build off of here. Um, I would argue the same thing for other online learning too. Like you need probably an undergraduate degree as that base foundation if you want to build a career off something that only requires an undergrad. 
But then online learning is great to fill pockets and things like classes you just didn't have time to take. So you have all the fundamentals, you've taken all the solid courses. Maybe you want to take one really specialized course in, I don't know, like credit modeling, for example. And you would go online and find some awesome online course to do it. Now, this is where I'm going to cringe a little. Most of the issues I have with online learning is that they're mostly wrong. And unfortunately, I'm seeing a large trend in textbooks with the same thing, where there's a lot of open source, as I'll put it, where it's like they're trying to make things free and cheap and easy. And by doing so, instead of going to a professor who's an expert on it and requiring, you know, you pay me a ton of money to do something, you're finding someone who's really cheap, who kind of knows and kind of doesn't know. And there are a lot of these online publishers on the internet, which you can, you know, just Google data science, machine learning, computer science, uh, finance, market, like there's, it's business, it's the tech side. There's a lot of these publishers out there. You'll know if you go to like big box stores and there's tons of these books. Uh, but there are books where it's like they're just mass produced. They're not really, really rigorous, well-known institutions. And so I'd even argue brick and mortar schools probably teach more from rigorous textbooks. Um, but again, online learning is great though for learning all kinds of interesting things, but just don't expect it to be like the highest quality. It's not going to be the very best. Um, but it is great for learning and filling in pockets as long as you have the foundational principles here. Um, and a final note here too, so picking degrees, I talk about this a lot. Whether it's an online degree or an in-person degree, look and see where those universities are placing students. And don't look for just the name. This drives me nuts. Um, just because it has Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, you know, what, whoever it is, Citadel. Just because it says that they place a student there does not mean that student is doing what your degree is doing. Like these institutions are full of thousands and thousands of employees from janitors uh, to secretaries, to lawyers, to operations teams, to quants building models, to uh, operations analysts, which is a whole other section and field. There's all kinds of areas in a bank. There's investment banking, there's sales and trading. And there's a lot of people in a bank. Just because you place someone with a bank doesn't mean they're doing what you want to do. So I highly recommend, even if you're considering an online degree, do your homework same for brick and mortar, do your homework, look to see where they're placing students, look to see the exact jobs they have and see if that's interesting. Now, if that job looks interesting and it looks like a perfect fit for you, go ahead and give it a try. But also remember location matters. So you might be, I don't know, somewhere in Africa or South America or Asia or somewhere else and you see someone has this excellent job and they have an online degree and they're working for this company. Uh, but also remember, they might be located near that company. So maybe they have a, I don't know, a job in Switzerland, and they're right there. And so they got the online degree. And for some reason, they knew somebody had a connection and got a great job because they're there. Um, often, again, these countries aren't going to ship people in from all over the world um, to a very specific location when they already have a bunch of candidates there. So keep that in mind as well. So anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.